The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to An Open Door on the Arts. My name is Barbara Richer, and I, as always, will be your host as we travel throughout the Capital Region, meeting those artists that so enrich our lives. Um, today, we have a special uh, program, because it isn't just a specific artist. It's a whole community. It's a whole home for people to come into to uh, exercise their creative wings and do a myriad of wonderful, wonderful things. Um, and I'm delighted to have a very special uh, person to take us on this tour. Um, but first, let me tell you where we're going. We're going to the Sanctuary for Independent Media. It's at 3361 6th Avenue in Troy. And when you get there, what you will see is a 100-year-old neighborhood church that's been amazingly, amazingly painted and crafted and created on the outside that just kind of brings you in. You just really want to get through those doors and see what's going on. And inside of there, it's a like a catacomb of rooms. And each of those rooms offers a space for creative genius to grow and connect. Doesn't that sound amazing? And it's right here in Troy. So I am going to introduce now Melissa Bromley, who is their first development director uh, and an amazing young woman who's taken this all on to bring out to you our audiences. So welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Barbara. It's good to be here. It's a, it's a big task you've undertaken. Sure. It is. Uh -huh. After coming yesterday and just walking through it, I was so impressed um, because it's not just a building. Um, then you and I walked down the block this way, down the block this way, across the road. So the so the um, tentacles, not in a bad way, but these fingers, these creative fingers, are reaching out and really embracing mm -hmm. the whole community of, of North Troy. Right. So we have been in North Troy for 10 years. It's our 10th anniversary. Wonderful. Uh, and we're celebrating uh, and. You're absolutely right. We uh, have grown beyond the walls of the sanctuary itself, mm -hmm. um, trying to transform some of the vacant property on our block into productive, beautiful, and usually green spaces. Yes, yes, very impressive, the ones that I saw. I'm gonna take you back into the building, though, for a minute, because I couldn't believe all the rooms in there. Maybe you can just walk us through some of it and and, Media, we know, and I think that's what started it, an mm. interest in sharing of um, sharing of uh, the equipment necessary to make movies and things. That's what brought this group together originally. Yes, we uh, our official name is Media Alliance. Okay. Um, and the Sanctuary for Independent Media is the hub for what we do. Mm -hmm. Media Alliance itself was incorporated in 1980 okay. as a network of media artists throughout New York State mm -hmm. uh, sharing access to media production equipment. Okay. At the time, it was very expensive, hard to come by. And uh, if you were in a commercial facility, it was nearly impossible to produce your own media. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what we were then is the same as we are now, a platform from which artists can uh, share resources and, uh, and build skills. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, now producing media is very accessible. Anybody with a smartphone can make a video and share it to the world. Isn't that amazing? The world. <laughs> In that amount of time, we've come so far. Yes, it is amazing. And so uh, as our organization has evolved, we have um, ourselves evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, and so 10 years ago, we opened the Sanctuary for Independent Media in North Central Troy. Mm -hmm. And in that building, we do have production facilities 
editing bays, um, and some very high, really world-class media artists who are part of our core group. Um, it's very impressive, that space. I mean, you. you can tell that really stunning things can happen there, you know, that you're, you're equipped to really move forward. That's, yeah. it, that's its whole space there. I wish I could take your audience on the tour that we took yesterday, because it is hard to convey just verbally what all is there all is within the sanctuary and beyond but i can tell i can tell the audience though that you have a terrific website and they'll have that at the end of this taping Thank and you. they have great pictures on you have great pictures on that website of the various rooms that you showed me mm -hmm. um, so they that's one way they can take their own private tour which is which is wonderful so so beyond just the media room and space in there. You have something brand new that you just started. Mm, yes. Long time in the making. This year, we kicked off uh, our own low-power community radio station, mm -hmm. WOOC 105.3. Okay. And you can hear it in all of Troy and parts of Albany. Um, and right now, it is fully automated. But in the fall, we are building the infrastructure to have community-made programming that Amazing. will be available to listeners. Mm -hmm. um, so local happenings as well as uh, musical programming. We have music on there now, and I hope that you'll all tune in. Tune in. And will this be available to burgeoning programmers or people that maybe want to develop a program or can do a program or who will actually be doing the hours that the station is is on yes we are very open to volunteers uh, and actively seeking people who can help us um, with weekly uh, and regular commitments to hosting programming wonderful and, wonderful uh, and some of that is uh, predetermined. Uh, we certainly want to be sharing local news. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then it's important to us that we, again, share voices that are unheard elsewhere. Right. So not necessarily repeating the kinds of programming you might hear on other stations, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. making sure that we are something different. Um, it seems very community oriented too. So you can maybe pinpoint some wonderful human interest stories in various communities that are in that catchment area yes. that people might not otherwise be aware of. Exactly. Shining the light on, on those dark spaces mm -hmm. or bright spaces, as yes. the case may be. Excellent, excellent. So that's another step in this whole um, art concept of reaching, uh, reaching the, um, the people that we're closest to. Absolutely. And making their environment sing, as it were. Um, and then there also is a, um, there are classrooms, mm -hmm. too. Yes. Want to tell our audience about that? Sure. Um, in addition to giving voice to our neighbors who might not be heard elsewhere, mm -hmm. um, we seek to empower our community. And one of the best ways to empower people is through education. Mm -hmm. So we host workshops, um, in particular, uh, environmentally uh, themed workshops. For mm -hmm. example, how to compost, how to keep bees, how to Wonderful. keep chickens. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, co-opted, bought, and uh, reshaped some vacant lots on our block into uh, public gardens. And we ourselves have chickens and urban beehives. Mm -hmm. And we have a carriage house, which is where we uh, host these workshops. Um, and How they're wonderful. by donation, and you can find uh, the schedule on the website. How wonderful. MediaAlliance.org. That's wonderful. And you do, um, you do a um, youth media sanctuary yes. program. And, and tell us about that. That's an exciting program. Yes. Uh, we work with teens to teach them the skills to create their own media. So camera work, uh, editing skills, mm -hmm. and really another piece of that that's important to us is the critical thinking skills. More than ever, uh, media is being consumed by our young people and, Absolutely. and it's very accessible. And it's hard for people to realize how much of what you're seeing has been 
edited or, or the opinions that are sort of embedded into the content that you're viewing. Mm -hmm. So when you get behind the camera and you have the chance to make your own media, you can see more clearly the choices that are being made behind the scenes that are affecting what you're seeing. And it gives you some perspective for um, judging what you're hearing and seeing, I would guess. Exactly. Yeah. I'm thinking about what you just said with, with kids, with with all of us, really, but certainly the kids of this generation are are bombarded all the time with, um, with mm. different ways of intaking the world around them. And, um, and you're right. I mean, even as a, an older adult, I don't always stop and think, now how... What slant was that presented on? You know, how did that um, word that they used or that that gesture that they made, you know, how did that influence my feeling about what I just saw? I, I don't do that enough, but it would be wonderful for kids to start doing that when they were really quite young and just grew up knowing um, that they could judge. They're the judge of what they hear and see. They right. don't have to, they shouldn't believe it all, take it in and accept it. They need to kind of look at it and, and study it and be sure of what perspectives being sent their way. Mm -hmm. So you teach them these skills in this, in this youth media program? Yes, exactly. And how do kids get involved in that? I mean, would they, would anybody just call up the sanctuary and say, I'm interested in taking part in your youth media project, or what would they do? That would be a good first step. Uh, okay. And our phone number is on the website. Right, um, and it'll be at the end of this interview, too. Great. Uh, and we, in particular, have had, for the past six years, a summer program called Uptown Summer, mm -hmm. which is um, in part funded by the Summer Youth Employment Program. Okay, uh, great. Through Rensselaer County. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that program, uh, students are, uh, within their schools, uh, apply for that program and are placed at various organizations. Excellent. Excellent. So that's a good way for them to start. Ask your guidance counselor. I ask your guidance counselor Summer and or call program. some call the youth media program at the sanctuary. Call the Could sanctuary. That? Okay. We'll give you Excellent. more information. Excellent. Um, that's a great idea. What, is there an age range of kids that you take in? That, I believe, is 14 to 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do they um, make any of their own media? Do they use equipment and, and practice shooting and presenting things? Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. So a radio station, wow, with opportunities. A summer, uh, a youth media sanctuary, Uptown Summer. Um, and you also have summer youth employment available. Is that true? That's the Uptown Summer program. That's the Uptown Summer. Okay. That's it. But you also have volunteer work available, too, for, for sure. students yes. uh, and for adults, I would guess, too, mm -hmm. for anyone that wants to come in and volunteer. We'll put you to work. Yeah, I, will. I know you will. Um, okay. So that's kind of the interior, and there was a kitchen area, so I know that you make snacks and things in yes. there, too. Feeding people is a, a big part of what we do. We, we feel it's important. Uh, a relationship changes when you eat together, mm -hmm. and, you, and uh, of course, because we have these beautiful gardens with organic food growing in North Troy, um, we want to be using that to give back. And so, we always feed our volunteers, and at many of our events, we have free food. Uh, that we give to everybody for free. Everybody. How wonderful. Now, we did walk, um, and we're going to move outside now. We know that there's a lot of media uh, kinds of things happening within. Uh, and what we should mention, too, before we step outside the front door again, is that w within it, and there are some wonderful pictures on the website again, is the actual sanctuary for this wonderful 100-year-old church. Mm -hmm. And that whole hall is devoted to many arts presentations and community presentations. Mm -hmm. So do you want to just talk a little bit about folks that you have in and how that's accessed? And Because some of your programs, all of them look wonderful, and some of them are really wonderful. So. Yes. Um, Tell us what happens in the sanctuary. <laughs> we lucked into the space, and it turned out to be just perfect for everything that we do. I mean, 40-foot ceilings, uh, this wonderful, wonderful old church with stained glass windows, uh, has just been the perfect location for um, musicians that we bring in. Mm -hmm. 
uh, speakers, and film screenings. Um, and we sort of work on two levels. We have these deep artistic roots uh, in New York City and uh, with relationships with um, really internationally renowned artists. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're able to bring in um, some very well-known people. Pretty impressive folks. Yeah, to speak um, or perform or share work that they've themselves created. Mm -hmm. uh, so last season, we had uh, Amy Goodman of D Democracy Now! came and spoke, and the place was packed. I mean, not only the sanctuary, but we had overflow room and oh, you know a simulcast oh, video with people um, watching Amy. Um, wonderful. And we had uh, Thomas Mapfumo come play last season as well. I'm sorry, I missed that. I yes. saw that looked wonderful. Yeah. It was just wonderful. I mean, uh, really well-known artists are coming through our doors, mm -hmm. and you would never think that that would be in North Central Troy. Uh, and it's great to bring people together. That's mm -hmm. really what we do. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly people from the capital region coming to a neighborhood they might not otherwise be in. And then for our neighbors coming in and interacting with people they might not otherwise interact with. It's, it's a whole wonderful cultural sharing opportunity. Exactly. For sure, it is. And I think that's part of the bedrock of your whole organization. Our is, mission. Is yeah. Your mission mm -hmm. is to um, create this place where, where art can be created and shared um, equally with everyone. And uh, um, it's fabulous to see the programming and stuff that you're doing uh, and, the, uh, and the offering of the um, training things and learning things that you're doing. It's really, they all feed into that mission. So now, we're just going to walk outside of the building, because uh -huh. that's very impressive, too. Um, you've really embraced the neighborhood. Maybe you can tell us about some of those spots that we walked to yesterday. Sure. Um, <laughs> so let's see. We're, we're in the sanctuary. It's this beautiful, safe place uh, for collaboration and uh, people coming together. And then you uh, walk out the door, you turn left and go north to the top of the block, and you see Freedom Square, mm -hmm. which was itself a, an, an old church that became vacant and mm -hmm. fell apart and then became a vacant lot. And uh, I think it was 2007 that we bought that space. That lot. Um, but don't quote me on that date. <laughs> uh, and we were able to transform it into what is now an outdoor performance space. There's a beautiful art stage built in collaboration yes. with the community. Uh, an artist, Isaiah Zagar, who's an internationally renowned um, public art muralist. Mm -hmm. And uh, the helped stage, design it, designed it for yeah, you. He yeah, he came yeah. here yeah. and he, he taught us how to do the work. And we worked with schools and neighbors to make hundreds of maybe even thousands of tiles that oh, became wow. the stage. And there's little pieces of mirror in there that reflect ourselves. It is and beautiful the when you're walking up to yeah. it. It's, it just glitters. It's just a glitter. It's lovely, really lovely. Yeah. And I have pictures again on the website of sure. some great uh, cookouts and things that you've had yeah. there with the whole community. and. And plus, anybody coming into North Troy for that celebration. Yes. And so in the summer, we'll have events here. And there's always live music. There's always free food. And sometimes there's um, free bicycles being given away in concert with the, uh, the bike rescue in Troy. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's free backpacks for a back-to-school event in concert with How wonderful. Um, our community partners. Uh, and so um, we also planted... Um, full-grown fruit trees in that lot so that we could start a food forest. Uh, the neighborhood we're in is a food desert, mm. uh, and it's not easy to come by healthy food. Fresh fruits healthy, and vegetables, fresh, I would guess. Organic. Um, so that's something that we pride ourselves on being able to provide for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, so that's, the, that's Freedom Square. Keep and then walking. you <laughs> turn back around, and you, you walk back south, uh, past the sanctuary, and on your right is Collard City Growers, which is the name of our garden. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, actually multiple lots um, that we have built on over the years. And um, 
it's really marvelous. And again, these are abandoned lots, or just lots that would be filled with refuge and trash, trash and weeds and stuff. So and you're walking in and yes, yes, producing something there, um, adding beauty. Thank you. <laughs> and I know you're a gardener as well, so I, I'm sure you can appreciate, I appreciate the, those gardens the for work sure. That goes into them. But people are very surprised that uh, not only is there this beautiful garden, but if you walk to the back of it, you see our chickens. Uh, we yes. have eggs that you know we're feeding people with, and beyond that is uh, an, a fully functional aquaponics system built by an That's RPI fascinating. grad who is a volunteer of ours. Um, and we have fish that fertilize plants that grow, and then we can eat the fish, and the fish themselves breed. It's a fully closed circuit of um, reproduction and nutrition. That's amazing. Uh, and then beyond that, you keep walking, and, and you can see a narrow lot that we purchased that was vacant and collecting trash. and. We, in concert with a, an RPI uh, art class, were able to obtain wire sculptures that nice. are living sculptures, and mm -hmm. they have vines growing on them, and it's an ongoing, breathing, itself evolving project. And then just beyond that, we have um, another L-shaped garden lot, which unfortunately we had the soil tested, and because of uh, industrial practices on that land, the soil is uh, too toxic to grow food. Oh, wow. So we have a bioremediation project. Now, that was surprising to me. Just yeah. explain that, because you, you're you actually remediating the soil. Exactly. By so doing. We, uh, we found that, uh, with a little bit of research, there are certain plants you can grow that will um, absorb particular contaminants from the soil. Mm -hmm. And then you remove the plants, and they, they themselves are actually um, hazardous material. You have to ship them to the biohazard wow. waste. Wow. I was so facilities. tempted to pick some of the flowers because they were so beautiful. But uh -huh. then you think, oh, no, they're, they're working here. They have a job to do. And then they have some place they have to go, so you can't really pick them there. But the long-term vision is that um, we'll have the soil retested, and at a certain point, it'll be at a level at which we can grow food. Mm -hmm. And on that lot, we also have a greenhouse and our uh, beehives. And your beehives. Yeah. Wonderful, productive bees. Yes. And you actually give the honey to people, and they eat it. And the, they teens can... are, the kids are a huge. The, the honey is a big hit. You know, is kids it? love sugar. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at first, what you usually see is a lot of uh, fear of the bees. Of course. Um, but you walked there yesterday. Yes, not one sting. Yeah. No stings. They're pretty tame, mm -hmm. um, and you grow more comfortable with them. And then when you realize that you can actually get honey from them. Then they're perfect. Yes. Then they're perfect. Uh -huh. Do you make things from the honey, or do you just process the honey and use, use honey, like put it on things? Yeah, we, we harvest the honey, and we'll share it uh, with the public and also incorporate it into meals that we make for our Good. events. Good. Good. Uh, but we harvest the wax also, and I know that there have been projects um, using that wax, mm -hmm. but I'm not totally familiar with it. So I ask our audience to think then, too, because there's this, this connection always with the things that you do. At least I saw that yesterday with these, these lots that you're salvaging, you know, um, from becoming weed, weed, um, weed packs and maybe not even safe places to be walking mm. through. Um, and the one place is just quite narrow. It's just between two houses. But it, it, but it provides something beautiful for each of these houses to look out at rather than just a, a weed patch. Um, so you're, So while you're changing the environment, you're also adding an art component in a lot of ways. The whole art wall at, at the um, um, Freedom Square. Uh, so uh, art is significant and integral to all of this other work that you're doing. Your sculpture, when you look, you look, when you look at your people sculptures, who eventually will be covered with with vines. Um, it's a really great combination between uh, between art and functional um, beauty in a community. That's Making exactly a right. Beauty. Art is the vehicle for all this work that we're doing. Right. Uh, the bottom line. It is 
the core of what's happening and collaborative art in particular. Right. So you're empowering people, you know, emerging artists who come and act as mentors for our teens, for example. Um, there's a young couple, Christian and Azure, who run Colored City Growers right now. Um, and Azure, this week I saw her posting pictures of um, fabric that she dyed with indigo how that wonderful. was grown in the garden. Oh, how wonderful. So you can see how the art is there in, in every piece, um, and, it, and it comes through. And it comes through. Ways. And you also are involved uh, in, in, a, in a big undertaking for Troy that I'm going to mention now. We have about five minutes, so we'll spend some time talking about this, this um, big undertaking called Breathing Lights. Yes. So you're involved with Breathing Lights. Yes. And are homes in your community part of the Breathing Lights? Yes. Tell us about that. Um, <laughs> Tell us what you do. So Brenda Miller is our arts and education coordinator uh, at the sanctuary, like a full-time volunteer. I mean, she gives so much of herself to the sanctuary, and she's a founding member. Um, and she is, was also pulled onto the Breathing Lights Project as the arts and education uh, coordinator for all three cities. Wonderful. So um, the sanctuary is the community hub for Troy, for Breathing Lights. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Actually, the the building that the, the formerly vacant building that we walked past yesterday that's yes, going to be down from the sanctuary across the street. Yes. Yes. Uh, we're we're renovating the basement into a citizen science lab, um, but because this building has its own beautiful story, was vacant and is now owned by us and being renovated and, and made into a productive space again, mm -hmm. it is going to be one of the houses that's lit by breathing oh, lights. wonderful. And when, wonderful. We, when we kick off the project on September 30th, um, the downtown Troy opening will be in um, the Art Center. Yes. And we're going to have a free trolley bringing people from downtown to North Troy to walk around the block and see the beautiful Your lights lit up. And the breathing lights there. And then... We're going to be sharing the stories of what it means to the community to be living amongst these vacant properties. How wonderful. And that's what the sanctuary and the other hubs are, are charged with doing. So we have neighborhood ambassadors who are going to be walking around the block sharing their stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have the People's History Museum, which will also be in that lit up building that we are renovating, mm -hmm. uh, sharing stories of people living in these neighborhoods. and what it means to them. What it means to them. Mm -hmm. um, That's powerful. That's wonderfully powerful. Yes. And you said you have children, too, that have written stories. That's a different project? It's a different okay. project. Okay, I don't yeah. want to go to the different project, okay. but I want to hear, but they, they, they should know that you have a wonderful reading of children's stories, too. But but this with Breathing Lights, I love that, th that the people will be um, sharing their stories of what that means to be, um, have your home vacant, or have your pa family's home vacant, or to be living next to a vacant home, and um, that's very strong. That's, that's just really strong. That's yes. good that you're doing that. So we can get to you on a trolley ride from the Capital Regions Art Center in Troy on September 30th, come to you and see the breathing lights and hear these stories and walk the block and see all of these things or some of these things yes. that we talked about. And on Saturday the 1st, the next day, we are having our seventh annual story harvest and we'll be doing it all over again. So if you can't make it on Friday, join us on Saturday. That's so awesome. That is wonderful. I think we're probably almost out of time. Is there a last minute thing that you want to say or anything that we didn't get to that you thought, oh, I really want to tell them about? Thank you for having me. Oh, we're delighted, and we hope you'll come back and talk to us again for sure. about all of your events. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you very much for being with um, us. Information at the end uh, as we roll along, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.